Hello team, good to see you again. Say, for Thursday's team, I'd, I'd like you to push a little bit further into inflation now. So, what we're going to do is I'd like you to have a look at uh, the major causes of inflation, just for a start. So, yesterday you had a look at what inflation was. Um, you had a look at specific terms, deflation, disinflation, hyperinflation, and stagflation. Um, now I would like you to look at the causes of inflation. And you're going to find there aren't that many causes. In fact, you can count the number of causes on one hand. So what I'd like you to do is to work out, so pause the video, work out what the causes, the main causes of inflation are, and make some notes on those. So hit pause now. Don't worry, I'll still be here. Wait. Keep going. You found them? It's alright. I'm still here. Yeah, I... Oh, not sure. Not sure you got them all. You got them all? Okay. So, looking at it, just thinking, um, you should have two to three major causes of inflation. You could possibly stretch it out to four. Alright. But the major ones that are important to focus on is demand, right? So the aggregate demand in the economy. What happens when demand increases in an economy? We know from our ADAS model that a increase in demand is going to cause the price level to rise. So therefore, that uh, is, tends to be classified as demand pull. You are pulling inflation up with regards to that. We have um, also on the other side, the supply side, if you will, costs of production. And costs of production could rise for a whole range of different reasons. Uh, oil prices, uh, minimum wage rises, or all, all sorts of different things that could possibly impact on the cost of production. So we could have a situation where the cost of production rise so substantially across the country that we see aggregate supply curve shift left. And that should cause the price level to rise. Okay, So therefore, we've also got a cost push inflation. Now, now you can talk... <coughs> you can talk about how... Inflation could be caused by money, the amount, the availability of money in an economy. And certain textbooks will, will, will discuss that. They will talk about there being uh, too few goods for too much money. Um, they'll talk about that, and that lowers the value of the actual money in and of itself. You could also talk about how the cost of production um, situation may have actually been caused by a country overseas and then those costs then get imported into the country. So some textbooks will also talk about imported inflation. So it depends on which part you want to focus on. So quite clearly, therefore, you're going to have very specific economic policies that you're going to be able to use to target the type, the causes, and the types, but the causes of inflation. So if you know that inflation is being caused by aggregate demand, then you should be thinking, well, we need to have some contractionary policies occurring in order to decrease demand, uh, hopefully causing the price level to decrease. If you know that it is being caused by the cost of production, maybe there needs to be some expansionary policies put in place in order to try and, and help with the, you know, the, the cost of production, say some subsidies, for example, to help with that. So uh, these, these are sorts of policies that you could discuss, you know, imports coming in and the costs, again, it's a cost situation, so it might be more subsidies that you discuss, um, and money. Well, that's going to be a whole separate topic in and of itself. The monetary policy side of inflation and inflation targeting, which is what we're going to look at, um, is, is going to require a separate 
uh, it's a separate discussion and we we should probably do that face to face um, so I do want you to have a think about a couple of ideas firstly for me I want you to think about why inflation is considered bad okay have a look through those notes make sure you've got good notes about the ideas that the causes of inflation yes those different types that we talked about yesterday but also why inflation is bad what happens in an economy if inflation is occurring what happens in an economy if inflation is occurring at a excuse me rapid pace so the idea of the hyperinflations oh did you find out about galloping inflation by the way just saying uh, what happens if inflation is exploding all right and it's also good to have a real life case study so what i'd like you to do is to find some real life examples of inflation occurring in different countries so it would be good if you could find say three maybe four different countries uh, with different inflation rates per country now i would like to do a face-to-face -face, you know chat video chat uh, on friday and maybe during that time i will ask you some of these questions and maybe I would like to flesh out a little bit about the idea of money and, and how money can be a contributing factor to inflation, but how it may actually be one of the policy, major policy tools that we use to fix inflation. So three to four countries, inflation rates in those countries, try and see if you can get different rates. Okay, so, you know, Venezuela, right? might be one that you could look at with regards to a higher level of inflation than perhaps some other countries. So have a go at that. Um, work on those notes, right? How inflation is created and the overall effects of inflation. When we move into the topic of money, we're gonna be having a look at something called the Fisher identity. So if you've got a bit of extra time, maybe you could look up what the Fisher identity is. All right, have a good day and I will see you tomorrow.